Okay, here we have light incident at boundary between two mediums. Let's say medium 1 has a refractive index of n1 and medium 2 a refractive index of n2. Now let's also say that the second medium is more optically dense. Now first we draw on the normal and we expect the light to bend towards the normal. So this here, theta 1, the angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the angle of incidence. And this is theta 2, which is again between the normal and the refracted ray. There will be some partial reflection. Uh, we're going to ignore that for now. Okay, so to how do we calculate the angles of incidence and angle of refraction? We can use Snell's law, where n1 and n2 are the refractive index of medium 1 and medium 2 respectively, and theta 1 and theta 2 are the angles between the rays and the normals in their in the respective mediums. Light is incident on a glass beaker which contains some oil. The incident ray makes an angle of 40 degrees with the air glass boundary. Complete the diagram accurately to show the passage of light from air to glass to oil. So first I'm going to draw on the normal at where the light is hitting the glass. Okay, so this 40 degrees is not the angle of incidence. Okay, this is the angle of incidence here because the top one is between the boundary and the ray, or the uh, 490 minus 42, which is 40 degrees, is between the normal and the ray, which is what we want. Okay, we know we, because we're going into a more dense medium, it's going to bend towards the normal, but we need to calculate the angle. So I'm going to use Snell's law. N1 is the refractive index of the medium I'm coming from, which is air, so that's going to be 1, and sine theta 1, so that's going to be the angle of incidence of so 48 degrees. And N2 is the refractive index of the medium I'm going into, so that's going to be glass, 1.51. And sine theta 2 is the angle of refraction, which I'm trying to find. Okay, rearranging this, taking sine inverse, we get 29.48 degrees. I'm going to put that on the diagram here. Okay, now we have to figure out what happens at the glass oil boundary. So I'm going to draw on the normal. And I know we're going to a less optically dense medium, so it's going to bend away from the normal. But it's not going to bend away from the normal so much that it's going to be parallel to the ray that was coming in uh, in the air. It's going to just bend away slightly. Okay, so now to calculate, uh, we're going to use Snell's law again, but we're going to need some angles. So we need to figure out the angle of incidence. Because these two lines here are parallel, we can use the maths idea of corresponding angles to figure out that this angle here is actually 29.48 degrees, same as the angle of refraction from the first part. Okay, so now I can apply Snell's law. So N1 is the refractive index of the medium I'm coming from. So in this case, it's actually glass at this boundary. So 1.51 times sine theta 1, which is 29.48 this time. Okay, N2 is the refractive index of the medium I'm going into. So I'm going into oil. So 1.40 and sine theta 2 is what I'm trying to find. Rearranging that, taking sine inverse, we get an angle of 32.06 degrees. The diagram shows light going from air into a substance with a refractive index of 1.42 and then entering an unknown medium. Without calculation, comment on the optical density of the unknown medium. So the unknown medium is one in blue here. And you can look at this boundary here. You can see the angle of incidence at this boundary is smaller than the angle of refraction, this one here. So that means it's bending towards the normal. So we know that the unknown medium is more optically dense than the one in gray here. So we know also that, that the refractive index of the unknown medium must be higher than 1.42. Okay, part B, determine the refractive index of the unknown substance. We can't quite apply Snell's law at the second boundary just yet because we don't have the angle of incidence. Okay, so we're going to start off with the first boundary over here and hopefully we can work out the angle of incidence at the first boundary. So we're going to start with Snell's law at this boundary here. N1, we're coming in from air, so it's 1. And then have angle of incidence at 30 degrees. N2, we're going into the gray medium, which has a refractive index at 1.42. And we're just rearranging this, taking the sine inverse. We get an angle of 20.62 here. I'm going to add that onto the graph here. Okay, so now we need to figure out what this angle here is by using that 20. 0.62. So firstly, hopefully you can notice that this angle here, the 20.62 and the angle over there are corresponding angles. So that's actually, sorry, alternating angles. That's, that's actually 20.62 as well. So therefore 90 minus 20.62 will give us this angle here. Another way of thinking about it is that we've got a right angle triangle over here. So this angle over here, by using 90 minus 20.62, you get 69.38. And then going around by using 
angles in a triangle add up to 180, subtracting the 69.38 uh, and the 90 degrees, we get 20.62. And then again, repeating the process of 90 minus 20.62, we get 69.38. Okay, so once you've got that angle, okay, we don't have to worry about the other angles. Okay, so we're going to apply Snell's law at the second boundary. So let's write that down. N1, we're coming from the gray medium, so we're going to use 1.42, and the angle of incidence is 69.38 here. N2, we don't know yet. Sine of 56 which is the angle of refraction, rearranging this and solving this, we get 1.62, which makes most, which makes sense because we're going into a more dense medium and the light is bending towards the normal. Light is incident on a triangular glass prism as shown in the diagram below. Determine the angle phi. Okay, so we can apply Snell's law at the first boundary over here. So N1, we're coming from air, so one. Angle of incidence is 28.6 degrees. And N2, we're going into glass, so it's a factor index of 1, and sine theta 2 is what we're trying to find. Here, rearranging this, taking sine inverse, we get 18.62. So this angle here is 18.62. Okay, to apply Snell's law, the second boundary, we're going to need this angle over here. So to do that, we need to understand that this here is a triangle, okay, the one in green here. Okay, so we can figure out this angle first by using the fact that this is a right angle triangle. So that's going to be 90 minus 18.62. Okay, then using the fact that angles in a triangle add up to 180, I'm going to do 180 minus the 71.39 minus the 35 degrees at the top will give us this angle over here. Okay, that's the remainder there. Now what we really want is the angle there. So we're using again using the fact that this here is 90 degrees. We can do 90 minus the 73.62 to get 16.39. So the angle of incident that we're looking for is 16.39. Okay, now we can apply Snell's law at the second boundary. So we're going from uh, glass to stem, so the N1 is 1.50, and angle of incident is 16.39. And N2, we're going back into air, so it's just one. And we're going to try to find phi here. Okay, so rearranging and making that the subject. By doing sine inverse, you get 25.0.